really important thing you need to remember is that on your pasteurization barrel, you always want to check the contacts of your heating element. You want to take your terminal ends off. Hopefully that's the way you're doing it. And you'll notice, I've already cleaned these, but the uh, tabs will rust pretty quickly being down here where it's so humid and you know you're washing everything and the this con current design of this barrel you know has the uh, element on the bottom so water can get underneath and whatnot but it never really touches it because I have uh, this board up here to create space but if you don't use something like uh, this drill with like a wire brush tip to it or sandpaper or something to get the context nice and shiny and clean free of rust you end up getting a poor connection and you'll melt your wires the the hot lead wire you see here I have a, a little bit fatter of a terminal end on it I think it's actually a 20 amp so you, you want to use some heavy duty that'll uh, reduce the amount of heat created as much as you can otherwise this whole it'll melt all the way back it will never catch fire in my experience but you don't want that situation anyway also too always make sure check your uh, plug you're plugging in. You can see my old one has the uh, the hot already burn out in it. I'm actually been only using the back one for the air conditioner and uh, switching it off to the pasteurization barrel when I need it. And I'll replace this uh, when the other one starts getting a little bit like that. You don't want to get it too long. It'll uh, smoke, cause a bad situation I'm sure. Again, it's I've never had any problems with it because, you know, they're GFI outlets and they're made to be safe, but still, always want to replace and uh, keep your equipment in top shape. So here are some blue oysters. This log is on its uh, third flush. That's why you don't see too much on it. But this is about the optimal point of maturity that uh, you want to harvest these at. See how the caps, the margins of them, how they're still downturned, you know, like this. When you start seeing them come up, or flatten, uh, that's when they're starting to really let out the spores. And from that point on, you'll won't have as nearly a good shelf life in the fridge. They, uh, even with blue oysters though, when you uh, harvest them when you should, they only really have a marketability of about one week before you gotta sell them. Because uh, they only last about two weeks in total, so that gives the chef a week. But you can see I'm gonna pick these. I don't need a knife or anything to pick blue oysters because they'll just pop right out. You see here it has a little of the stump. Harvesting blue oysters from uh, the buckets was even easier. You can see here that uh, they snap off really clean. There's not a lot that's holding them on. So it's just that little circle that you snap right off and it makes for easy pickings. So I'm going to uh, take this. You see I have my shelf with some butcher paper. And I'm gonna plop it down there. And all these, I'm just gonna do the same, making sure I don't roll the log off. Usually, when you wanna harvest these, you wanna come up underneath of it and kinda get your fingers scissored around the stump. That way, when you pop it off, it's not going to uh, let out your hands and hit the floor. Make sure you get a little bit of good grip too with your thumb. Try to be as delicate as you can. And you see it all comes off. It'll be a cluster. Sometimes it looks like it's much larger than it is, but it'll pop off and you'll see it's a whole bunch grown together. Now I, I will divide this one, split it apart, so it's about the same size as these two over here, just because uh, when we're putting them in boxes, you don't want big clusters like that because it'll it'll lessen the amount of airflow that gets around the mushroom 
and it will shorten its shelf life. Now being this is the third flush on this log, I'm going to put it outside and since there's not a whole lot of mold on it and it's supposed to get rainy here for the next week, I might just prop it up against uh, some tall grass or a tree and see if I can get a little bit more out of it just for fun. If it was really moldy, I would uh, slice it up, so slice the plastic off and put it in my compost pile. You can see you can pick these relatively fast. I even get these little ones. But stuff that you see it's too dry, these little aborts that go nowhere. Don't worry about those. But these ones are still good. And there you have it. Now if this was a log that I was keeping, every little bit that didn't go anywhere you want to pick out. All these little guys. Because if you don't, when you start misting these logs again, those little mushrooms have a good chance of molding up. And you see it's pretty easy. But uh, harvesting blue oysters is quick. Harvesting king oysters, not so quick. So, let's harvest some king oysters now. Now, if you remember, I said uh, this log had some problems with heat. So, and this stuff is gonna, we can just pick off with our hands. Kinda neat looking, really. It's like maybe the Grand Canyon. So, you wanna start somewhere, usually I do it either on an end or in the middle. Kinda where there's an open space and some of these you can see are gonna be easy to get out. But you gotta, I, I use a, a really sharp serrated steak knife. And just get in there and give it a sawing out. And you can see uh, there's some plastic attached to that. I'll sweep that up later, but you don't wanna put that with everything else. This is really a fat one, isn't it? So we got the same paper. Another note too, I've used this paper about three times over, and I don't know if you can tell, but there's a whole bunch of white spores on it. I'm going to throw it away and uh, strip out a new sheet, because you don't want to get so much spores it gets gummy. So we're going to just keep on slicing each one of these. You can see this is going to take a minute. How I separate those two. Make sure you start if you're, you know, using like a milk crate like I am. Put the weight of it in the center first, so you don't uh, toss them onto the floor. Now, I could have probably let these go another 12 hours, maybe even more, but because the log underneath of it definitely needs to go be harvested. I'm just going to pick it all. That's why some of these are, some of the caps are still much more curved down and inward. The more, more inward the cap is and younger the mushroom, the better it'll keep in the fridge. And I'm going to lay these all out, cap, caps facing up, because when we put them in front of the fan, you don't want the fan to uh, blow the spores out of the gills because keep on doing that eventually you're going to start getting spores everywhere on your walls and everything that's why I have that uh, box fan with a furnace filter behind it to collect the spores 
Now you can tell that a lot of these do have a different shape to them because this log had problems where it's much, much fatter of a stem. I mean, that is huge. Some of these that are not really in there, you can just pick off and you can tell uh, they got a small stump and see I didn't really pick too much waste material so no one's going to complain about that. Now even though this log had heat problems, in my experience, as long as the colonize is fine, doesn't produce any mold anywhere in the log. You can go ahead and try it for a second flush, and sometimes you'll get what you, uh, or at least most of what you lost. It'll have enough time for the mushroom to beat out any uh, bacteria or anything that popped up in the log, so that mold doesn't get a hold. That's really the ender is the mold. In nature. You're really hard pressed to find mushrooms growing in the wild that aren't uh, on a log that has mold and other stuff growing it, competing. So that's what it's all about is competition. What mushroom can grab the food the quickest and defend its food the best. That's why these logs have, what, remember what I said, metabolite which is that orange liquid that it secretes to protect it from bacteria. Now when you start getting to these ones that are hard pressed in here, you see it's, it's actually mashed into the shelving. So I'd have to actually roll the log away to pull it back and that ain't happening yet because I got so many other mushrooms holding or that are pinned between. So I have to come back to it and uh, free it up when I get some more mushrooms cut off the other side. That came right off. When you get a cluster like this, you still have all this stuff on it, go ahead and pull it off because your chef won't use it. And it's no point selling to your chef something that is not usable. See, there's still quite a bit of wetness. I haven't missed these mushrooms in a couple days. When they start getting really big like this, growing fast, you'll see that it splits in the center. That's a sign that your mushrooms are growing really fast. Sometimes you'll get ones that are actually cup shaped, and if you spray water in, like make about a half inch of standing water in the cup, it'll drink it up. And like, uh, just a span of like a half a day and use it to make the mushroom bigger. Alright, so I got one full uh, shelf's worth. I'm going to go grab another one and uh, cut some more off.